We're back. It's another episode A Little Karibo Watches Yu-Gi-Oh! GX. The show where that activity takes place. Technically it doesn't, it actually already happened and I'm talking about watching it. So this video series should be called Little Karibo Talks About Watching Yu-Gi-Oh! GX. You are a live video title. But not really, Little Karibo Watches Yu-Gi-Oh! GX. And if you've not been watching, this is a series where I watch Yu-Gi-Oh! GX, the dub thereof, and react to it in video form. And I've gotten a whopping six episodes in now. And so far, I'm kind of shocked with the lack of chilling out with the crew in the schoolyard, and the fact that they actually do try really hard to find trouble in this show. The theme song is just a load of bollocks, isn't it? Catchy bollocks, though. Catchy bollocks. I feel like that's a very violent and vulgar game that kids play on the schoolyard. Hey, you wanna play catchy bollocks later? I'll bring the bollocks. Catchy bollocks is is my favorite music genre. A lot of TV theme songs in it. And this TV show's theme song is no different. If you want to hear the catchy bollocks that is the Yu-Gi-Oh! GX theme song, be sure to watch the show on either Crunchyroll.com or you got Hulu.com or you got Yu-Gi-Oh!.com. You got like a plethora of options to watch the show totally legally and without guilt. Plenty of remorse though, a lot of that. But without remorse and delay, let's get on with what takes place in episode seven of Yu-Gi-Oh! GX, entitled Cruel? No, Duel and Unusual Punishment. It's a play on words. See, they switched out the word cruel with duel. Ah, yes, he really did that. And the title alone is enough to pique my interest. Not so much the duel part of it or the punishment part, but the unusual part. I'm really curious as to what the unusual aspect of this punishment will be. Because, you know, they could probably come up with some really creative forms of punishment in a school all about card games. You think instead of detention, the kids get sent to the Shadow Realm for a night. If they're caught cheating, do they have to sit in a chair for several hours while Bastion Misawa just sort of leans over them and drools condescendingly? He's just like, <clears throat> and he just sort of dribbles condescension out of his mouth onto your head for several hours. It's like water torture, except it's a Bastion Misawa. I like that one. So yeah, I'm curious as to what the cruel and unusual, uh, dual and unusual punishment is, I should say. Let's find out. Let's dive right in. So the episode starts off with Alexis walking down the pier of Academy Island and stopping when she sees Zane. You may remember Zane as the character who appeared in the first episode just to establish that he exists. And I guess Alexis was going to the pier to brood about her brother being missing, but Zane is there brooding about his brother. So they can't just both stand there brooding about their brothers. It'd be real awkward. You can't brood as a team. Having said that, there is no I in brood, but there is an ooh, which is what Alexis does when she sees Zane. She goes, ooh. I tell a lie, actually. What she really does is this really, really bad looking walking animation. Hello? Hang on a sec, we gotta stop the review because I just realized I left my drink outside. Okay, we can carry on now. Alexis asks what Zane is doing there, and he says nothing. He just wants to be alone. What? An accurate depiction of a teenager in a Yu-Gi-Oh! series? That is weird. And Alexis says to Zane that she thought that once his brother enrolled in the school, that he wouldn't want to be alone as much anymore. And Zane says, well, maybe that's because my brother shouldn't be here. Ooh. And then we fade to like, what looks like another military vehicle with military dudes inside of it. What, does another booster pack need to be transported to a card shop? Because apparently that requires a military escort. And then the vehicle pulls up outside the Slifer Red Dorm and all the soldiers inside it start pouring out. And in doing so, they wake up Professor Banner who comes out of his room and mistakes the noise for the kids making a bunch of racket. And when opening his door, Banner accidentally lets out Pharaoh the cat, who looks around and says, Meow, are these the loyal subjects who bring me fresh kitty litter. The stuff that feels good beneath my paws. That's good stuff. Prah. And then Banner spots the military looking guys going up to Jaden's room. And he says, oh no, it's the disciplinary action squad. <laughs> the what? What? The disciplinary action squad. So like a prefect, if they were a military unit. It's interesting to me that the school has the budget for that, but not for, say, roping off the abandoned dorm in any shape or form. Or, you know, having reliable security on site. You know, at the place where children 
are documented to have gone missing. That's silly though. The disciplinary action squad? That's worth having around though. And after the big reveal of the disciplinary action squad, and I'm still reeling over that one, we get the Yu-Gi-Oh! GX theme song! The best theme, scientifically proven, because it is the only Yu-Gi-Oh! opening to feature a dual vest. That is science. And then we cut back to the action and we see Jaden, Cyrus, and Chumley all in mid-hibernation, taking that long sleep between card games. They can go years sometimes, as long as they have enough food and shelter. There's a hammering on the door that wakes Jaden up, and he hears a woman's voice saying to open the door or they'll bust it down. And Jaden's response is to be like so. Jade and Yuki there being completely ambivalent to the potential threat of military invasion. You know, like he is. Classic Jaden. Jaden opens the door and there's a woman standing there in uniform who tells both Jaden and Cyrus that they're under arrest. Okay, five fantasies. Jaden and Cyrus are like, what did we do wrong? And it turns out that normal summoning monsters in face-up defense mode is a heinous crime and they're all guilty. Back at the school now, Jaden and Cyrus are staring up at these giant screens depicting the faces of the woman in uniform uniform, the chancellor of the school, Professor Crowler of course, and even that one guy from the first episode who posed that multiple choice question to Bastion. The first of the victims of the posh sh dead. And this scene reminds me of that part in the Avengers where Nick Fury is talking to the World Security Council. Except instead of the World Security Council it's the staff of Duel Academy. And instead of Samuel L. Jackson it's... Jaden Yuki. The woman from the DAS accuses Jaden and Cyrus of trespassing on the abandoned dorm, and she says that they were tipped off by an anonymous letter, and they have to make Jaden and Cyrus an example for the rest of the school. Oh, here comes that unusual punishment. What are they gonna do, force them to play with only 39 cards in their deck? Can't think of anything more unusual for them than that. So Crowler says that rather than be tyrants and, you know, actually really punish them like a staff would, they should be nice and give Jaden and Cyrus the opportunity to defend themselves in a tag duel. Oh, tag duel. And I like tag duels, but I don't see how this is more efficient than, you know, just say, expelling them or suspending them. You know, just straightforward punishment. Why do all the punishments have to take the form of card games that these guys so easily win? Just do the thing that you're going to do. Just do the thing. Just do it. Just, just do the thing. So yeah, Jaden and Cyrus are gonna have to tag team. Hang on, tag team? The Undertaker? Is Yu-Gi-Oh! GX just secretly WWE Smackdown circa 2005? What's going on with that? Cyrus has some reservations about this predicament, but then Jaden hears the words duel and win and immediately decides for both of them that they're okay with it. Sorry Cyrus, you chose him as your friend. Later on, Chumley is in the Chancellor's office. Oh, That's like a whole 10 minute walk away from his bed! How'd he pull that off? He's not even willing to do that for class. And Chumley tells the Chancellor that he was also at the abandoned dorm and that he he should be teaming up with Jaden, not Cyrus. So long as the tag duel takes place within the 30 minute time window during the day when he's awake. That's a daily average. And then Alexis walks in and says, no, it should be her dueling alongside Jaden. Because according to Alexis, they were only in the abandoned dorm to help her. And Chumley says, that is so bogus. It was totally his fault. And he says that he led them there because he wanted to check out the abandoned cafeteria. He's fat! General Manager Teddy Long says that the match has already been set. And they can't do nothing about it. Back at the Slifer Red Dorm, Cyrus embraces Chumley and begs him to tell him he doesn't have to be tag team partners with Jaden. Can you blame him? Chumley apologizes to Cyrus and reiterates that he did lie about leading them to the abandoned dorm. And Jaden laughs and says, well, you did lead us to the cafeteria. He's fat! Well, if they reuse the joke, I can do it as well. Jaden is shown sorting through his deck, presumably trying to stack it in a certain way that allows him to draw three monster reborns in the first turn. Cyrus is still very powerful. Panicky, so Jaden says that he's confident in their ability to win. And then he says, You and I are gonna work out all our kinks right now. Well, I for one am really into finding a free pair of shoes in my locker. Really gets me off. Nobody else? Just me. Later on, Chumley is standing on the edge of a cliff face, looking down on Jaden and Cyrus who are setting up to duel at the ocean's edge. It's as dramatically dumb as it sounds. Chumley encourages them both to go easy on each other as it's just practice. And then he adds that he's not sure if Jaden knows how to go easy. Are you kidding me? Have you seen him in class at any point? Jaden Yuki is absolutely the type of person to start a new game of Contra and select easy mode, and then brag online about all his high scores. 
has an easy mode of Contra. Does it have an easy mode? Doesn't matter, he would find it. Jaden Yuki, shit at Contra. Alexis shows up and says it's a good thing that Jaden won't go easy, as it's not like Crowler will just match them up against pushovers. I don't know who Crowler's matched them up against, but you could be damn sure they'll be able to beat Jaden at fucking Contra. Jaden gives Cyrus detailed instructions on how to go about getting his game on. Cyrus still seems kind of worried about things, so Jaden says, let's have some fun. Side note, reminder that Jaden's concept of fun is watching a man be eaten alive. So you might want to watch yourself there, Cyrus. Elite Duel Monsters extraordinaire Jaden Yuki looks at his opening hand and says, sweet! Just blurts it right out. I've got a great opening hand, everybody. Just letting you know. I probably got polymerization. Full of elemental heroes. Just thought you should know about my great opening hand that I have. So that's Jaden. And then he normal summons elemental hero Avion in attack mode. Kudos for not f***ing it up this time, Jaden. We'll have none of that defense shit from now on, thank you. Cyrus looks at his opening hand and thinks that he has at least one monster that could beat elemental hero Avion. Except he says elemental hero Avian and doesn't pronounce it like it's some sort of knockoff bottle of Evian water. Cyrus summons his patroid in attack mode, and it's like a weird, chibi, anthropomorphic police car with a police hat on and everything. What? 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 Why does it need a hat? That's gonna keep me awake at night. Why does that car need a hat? And then Cyrus tells Patroid to attack elemental hero Avion, but Jaden is able to activate a trap card to stop the attack. In other words, the police car took one look at Jaden Yuki and realized he was the whitest person they'd ever encountered, and as a result had to stop pursuing him. He's very white, and shit at Contra. At the clifftop, Chumley looks down and sees Pharaoh the cat rubbing up against his legs, so he picks him up and starts cuddling him. Meow. Yes, hold me close to your bosoms, koala man. Pra. Bra. Alexis says this isn't a good sign. There's no way they'll win in the tag match if Cyrus plays like this. What, attacking? Being a main character in a Yu-Gi-Oh anime, Cyrus has the natural reaction to failing in a card game, going momentarily insane. Don't you think that dirt is just the coolest, Jaden? Jaden takes this moment to explain to Cyrus exactly what he did wrong. You see, Patroid had a special effect wherein Cyrus could have used it to look at what Jaden's trap card was. So yeah, I have to agree, Cyrus. Kind of a major amateur move there. Whoops. Cyrus just made the obvious error of not reading what the card says at all. But I mean, you can understand, right? Who reads the cards before they play them? What? Who does that? Not me. Yeah, legit, actually, not me. I, I don't read them. I'm dumb. But Cyrus is more dumb, because he's going to a school about this. Jaden looks at his hand and sees that Sparkman's there, and he thinks to himself, All right, Cyrus is in for a shock. Oh, he even thinks in puns! Ugh. Are we sure it's not a Yugi situation wherein he's been possessed by the spirit of an ancient Egyptian dad joke? Because that's my theory. Jaden summons Sparkman! 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 And he has it destroy Patroid while Abion attacks Cyrus's life points. And from above, Alexis offers Cyrus her support while Chumley experiences his eighth heart attack that day. Of course you can win, Cyrus! You just have to believe in yourself! <sighs> Chumley agrees with Alexis and tries to encourage Cyrus not to give up, saying that's the first thing they teach you in freshman dueling class. Oh, is that what I've been doing wrong? You're not supposed to give up. No wonder they've not let me in this school yet. Don't give up. Interesting strategy. Chumley's cheerleading is successful at cheering up Chirus, and even Alexis has to comment that Chumley is surprisingly good at motivating people. And Chumley explains that he's an expert at motivation because his dad is always sending him books on self-motivation. A great little joke there about how the younger generation are just lazy f**k-ups. Clearly not written by a jaded old person. Yu-Gi-Oh! GX! It's the next generation who are, by the way, sh**. I actually appreciate the show for being about lazy fuck-ups saving the world. I like seeing myself reflected in media. And Chumley is nothing if not a reflection of me. Cyrus activates Pot of Greed and explains what it does. So now that we've thoroughly covered that, I'm never going to reference it again. And then he draws a card called Power Bond, which he calls like polymerization, but better. Causing Jaden to walk all the way across the duel field and grab Cyrus by the scruff of the neck, lift him up and stare him dead in the face and say, what the f*** did you say to me? And then Cyrus thinks to himself, he's not good enough to play that card 
because of something his brother told him a long time ago. And then we get a flashback to when Cyrus was just a little kid. He's an itty bitty Cyrus. No wait, he's already itty bitty, isn't he? Itty a bitty a Cyrus. And it seems that when he went to school as a kid, he was bullied by this other kid. And we see this bully playing a card game with Cyrus. So wait, is he bullying him by forcing him to participate in a card game? Or is the card game to dictate who gets bullied by who? How does this card game situation relate to bullying. Because if it's just a guy saying, I'm gonna beat you in a card game, that's not really a bully. That's a challenger. Bullies do things like dump your books and give you wedgies. They don't request your participation in a friendly game of Snap. Also, these kids are using dual discs. And as I've established, they're very dangerous. What are the parents thinking here? They're not. They're not. By the way, it sounds like this bully might have been voiced by Macho Man Randy Savage. Quit your stalling, you little pipsqueak. You know you're gonna lose. So let's just get it over with! Somebody listened to that and said, yeah, that sounds like every child I've ever met. Adequate job. Cyrus is super confident that he'll be able to defeat this bully and therefore not be bullied anymore? Is that what the stakes are? What? What is happening and why? And he has power bond in his hand and he's about to play it when his brother Zane interrupts things and stops him. And then Zane just walks up to Macho Kid Randy Savage and offers him a rare card in exchange for not bullying Cyrus anymore. Yeah, you know what would have stopped the intense bullying that I was subjected to in high school, carrying around Pokemon cards to bribe them with. Definitely would have solved it. Itty Bitty Zane lectures Ittiest Bittiest Cyrus on his use of the Power Bond card, saying that if he'd used it to summon a monster, his opponent would have just activated Spellbinding Circle and made it unable to attack no matter how powerful it was. And then Zane goes on to say a number of other things to Cyrus, but unfortunately Cyrus is too busy wondering what time it is to hear any of it. Zane says there's more to dueling than knowing how the cards work. And then we cut to all the characters from Yu-Gi-Oh! Season 1 who say, yeah, and sometimes you don't even need to know that. In the present, Cyrus is having a visible nervous breakdown. So of course, Jade and Yuki regards it and just sort of thinks, Cyrus sure is struggling with his move. Does nothing f***ing phase this man! Oh, guy getting eaten alive. <laughs> oh, my friend having an existential crisis about card games. <laughs> I can't wait for him to face an actual end of the world situation and just go, <laughs> at it. Cyrus elects not to use Power Bond and instead use polymerization to fuse two of his monsters into Steam Gyroid, which looks for all the world like a steampunk fidget spinner. Cyrus then calls the attack. Attack! Train! Twister! Oh, it's a train? How is that a train? I've never looked at something claiming to be a train before and had reason to doubt it. But here we are. Cyrus uses the train to destroy elemental hero Avian. Jaden laughs off the damage and looks at Cyrus and says, hey, no pain, no gain. And from where I'm standing, you're gonna gain a lot. Is he gonna hurt him? Jaden summons elemental hero Thunder in paradise. And Pharaoh the cat is disturbed by the sudden onset of poor weather and jumps out of Chumley's arms. Meow, I cannot allow my beautiful hide to become slick with rainwater. It's quite unbecoming of a Pharaoh. Cat. Nyan, nyan, nyan. Thunder Giant special ability immediately destroys Steam Gyroid. And then Jaden summons elemental hero Bastina f and then Jaden lowers Cyrus's life points to 200 with Thunder Giant. And then Bastina f**ks the rest of his life points up. Jaden says, that's game. Side note, Jaden also considers allowing a man to die to be a game. Speaking of games, you're sh** at Contra, Jaden. Cyrus is disappointed by his performance in the duel, and Jaden says, no way, man, you made some sweet moves. I think I counted one successful move. Inspirational advice from Jaden Yuki. If you can pull off a move, then you have pulled off sweet moves. Jaden is curious about the card that Cyrus got excited about but didn't play. So he reaches into his deck and he's like, oh my god, power bond. And it's like, how the hell did you know that that was the card he was looking at? I can allow for so much random deduction on this show, but Wow, that's a doozy. Jaden Yuki's deduction skills are so good, apparently, that he could count how many jelly beans are in a jar from a different room, blindfolded, without even being prompted. He just knows. Cyrus explains that he can't play that card because his brother told him he wasn't good enough to use it. They don't put it in your deck, mate. What are you doing? Put a card in there that you don't have some sort of traumatic event association with. Cyrus runs off and Alexis is quick to swoop in on Jaden. And she says to him, I guess practice Practice doesn't always make perfect, at least when it comes to Cyrus. He made like one mistake in one card game. And you're like,
like, oh, I guess he can't get any better. Not from practice anyway. Those two turns he played, prove that. What? Jaden says that he wishes Cyrus could see Cyrus the way that he sees Cyrus. What, from a little bit higher up? And Jaden offhandedly mentions that Cyrus is struggling with things because of something his brother said to him. And then Alexis gasps, presumably because she just now remembered a type of card that she forgot to list when prompted by Crowler in episode two. Alexis explains that Zane, Cyrus's brother, goes to this school too, and he's kind of a big deal. And apparently he's the best duelist on campus. And Jaden thinks to himself, well, he doesn't sound like he's very good to his brother. And then thinks to himself, well, his brother's not a trading card, so there's no issue. Jaden is very curious about Cyrus's situation with his brother, and Alexis tells him not to pry. So he says, Oh, I won't pry. I'll duel this guy to find out what's up. Classic Jaden, being a naive little d but Jaden, you could completely ruin his relationship with his brother. I don't care. Card games. You could destroy his life. Card games. Card games. Is there such thing as a zero track mind? I think there might be in Jaden's case. So yeah, it looks like Jaden's going to try and challenge Zane to a card game in order to make his relationship with his brother better? But the funny thing is, even though Jaden is doing this and showing interest in Cyrus's life, he's only doing it in the hopes that Cyrus will become better at card games as a result. He's not really doing it out of any genuine interest in his well-being, just at his well-playing. He's not being a good friend, he's just trying to help him be better at card games so they both win card games. It's kind of messed up to me. But interestingly, I am getting pretty invested in some of these little side stories. Like the stuff with Cyrus and his brother in this one. Not even just his brother, but Cyrus's insecurities in general. I'm not gonna lie, I identify with him quite a bit. Especially right now. I've got a lot of insecurities sort of bubbling up inside me, so... Seeing Cyrus have to deal with them is, uh, is nice. It's, it's helpful. Even if it is, again, related to card games. But yeah, the disciplinary action squad. What is that? What kind of punishments do you think that they'd hand out to people at Duel Academy? And obviously a lot of them involve having two people play a card game with each other. But let's think more creatively. Do you reckon a student's ever had to write, I will not throw my friend's Exodia cards into the ocean on the chalkboard? There must be loads of weird card game punishments. Tell me what you think they are. Speaking of thinking, I think I want to give a huge shout out to all of our Patreon pledges, thanks to all you guys. You guys, you guys, you've done some sweet moves. According to Jaden's definition, making one move is making many sweet moves. So thanks to all the sweet moves from our patrons. Tune in next time, which might not be next week, unfortunately, as we are taking a little bit of a trip to Hawaii for a convention. So uh, if the next episode is delayed, I do apologize for that. But hey, I will catch you and your catchy bollocks later. Zane? Hello?